Hello, and thank you for joining us for this joyous event, celebrating Tony Tipton Martin and the Julia Child Award. I'm Dr. Anthea Hartig, the Elizabeth McMillan Director of your Smithsonian National Museum of American History. We are thrilled to be able to share this special celebration with all of you as our most inspiring friend in food history, Tony Tipton Martin, received this annual award presented by the Julia Child Foundation for Gastronomy and the Culinary Arts. I want to begin by saying that I'm here in Washington, D.C. on the native lands shared historically by the Nakostin, the Piscataway, and the Palmonkey tribes. Wherever we are, let us acknowledge and give our respect to native peoples for the opportunity to work and live and dine and eat and share food together in their territories. While we are celebrating virtually again this year, we're connected in these troubling times by our common humanity, our love for food history, our gratitude to the people who grow it, who prepare it, and provide the food and drink that nourishes and sustains us. We so look forward to being able to celebrate food history again in person with you next year. Join me here now inside the museum's exhibition, Food Transforming the American Table. It features one of the Smithsonian's most treasured objects, Julia Child's Home Kitchen, collected by our incredible museum staff 20 years ago this fall. We're so excited to celebrate this milestone as we celebrate the award bearing Julia's name and this year's most worthy recipient. We are also excited to be celebrating the 25th anniversary of the Smithsonian's American Food History Project. In honor of this anniversary, we've created an initiative called 25 at 25, the food fund for the future. We have a goal of raising 25 gifts of $25,000 or more. This will enable us to continue creating and providing exceptional food history programming and exhibitions. The project's research, collecting, and programming are key to the museum's goals for becoming the most relevant, inclusive, accessible, and sustainable history museum in the country. Please visit the link below to donate to this fund at any time of the day or night. Gifts, of course, are welcome at any level. And we would like to extend our deepest gratitude to our sponsors who have already provided support for this important initiative and its own sustainability. I'm delighted that I'll be joined by special guests who have known Tony over many years and can speak poignantly and passionately to her work and her career in food journalism, African-American culinary history, community health and advocacy, and especially mentorship. We'll hear from individuals who inspired Tony as she started her career and her journey and those who have benefited from her wisdom and her encouragement on theirs. It's truly my pleasure to introduce our first speaker and our dear friend, Lonnie G. Bunch III, the 14th Secretary of the Smithsonian Institution. Thank you, Anthea, and welcome to everyone viewing this Julia Child Award Ceremony celebrating the achievements of Tony Tipton Martin. I've been so impressed by the National Museum of American History's Food History Project. So I'm pleased to see the museum and the Julia Child Foundation present the 2021 Julia Child Award to Tony, someone I've long admired. Tony has inspired young women and people everywhere with her commitment to using the culinary arts for social justice. From being the first African-American woman to serve as food editor for a major newspaper, to become editor-in-chief of Cook Country Magazine and Television, Tony has broken many barriers. As a historian, I also admire Tony's use of archives, libraries, and museums for research. That's clear from her award-winning books, The Jemima Code, Two Centuries of African-American Cookbooks, and Jubilee, Recipes from Two Centuries of African-American Cooking. They reveal in painstaking detail African-Americans' underappreciated contributions to our culinary traditions. Thanks to the museum's donors and the Food History Project supporters, who made today's event possible. And thank you, Tony, for all your tremendous work. Congratulations on your well-deserved 2021 Julia Child Award. Thank you, Lonnie, for your thoughtful words and your ongoing support. 
Now let's learn a bit more about tonight's recipient, Tony Tipton Martin. Tony Tipton Martin has made it her life's work to shine a light on the people behind our food. As the seventh recipient of the Julia Child Award, Tony's being recognized for her pioneering work to ensure that African American cooks and authors receive overdue historical recognition for their significant contributions to American food and culture. A California girl through and through, Tony grew up in the Windsor Hills neighborhood of Los Angeles. Her early culinary education took place in her grandmother Nanny's kitchen, where she absorbed pie-making techniques and life lessons in equal measure. Her mother treated their home like an urban farm, growing her own fruits and vegetables, and instilling in Tony an appreciation for healthy living. Alongside her love of food grew a love of writing and storytelling. Tony began her career in journalism, eventually landing at the Los Angeles Times as a nutrition writer and reporter. In 1991, Tony became the first African-American woman to hold the position of food editor at a major daily newspaper, the Cleveland Plain Dealer. Like Julia, Tony held to the courage of her convictions, challenging the status quo and entering rooms that historically had not been open or welcoming to black women. Tony began studying black culinary history, a journey which led her into musty secondhand stores where she spent a small fortune amassing a collection of more than 400 black cookbooks. This collection spans nearly 200 years of black cooking and reflects traditions that extend far beyond the stereotypical soul food that African-American chefs have historically been pigeonholed in. This collection became the jumping off point for much of Tony's most celebrated work. In 2005, she published a historic reprint of the Bluegrass Cookbook by Minnie C. Fox, containing the first known photographs of African-American cooks. In 2015, Tony published the Jemima Code, Two Centuries of African-American Cookbooks, an annotated bibliography in which she surveyed and analyzed many of the books in her collection, recognizing the hidden figures of their authors. In 2019, Tony published Jubilee, Recipes from Two Centuries of African-American Cooking, in which she adapted many of the recipes from her collection for the modern kitchen. Jubilee won wide acclaim, a James Beard Award, IACP Cookbook of the Year, and was named a Best Cookbook of the Year by The New York Times, The New Yorker, NPR, The Atlantic, and more. The scope of Tony's work extends far beyond the publishing world. In 2008, she established the Sandy Youth Project to inspire families to celebrate their own cultural contributions and to eat and cook more healthfully. Former First Lady Michelle Obama invited Tony to the White House for her work to help families live healthier lives. She's also a co-founder and former president of the Southern Foodways Alliance and Foodways Texas. In 2020, Tony was named editor-in-chief of Cook's Country Magazine and television show, where she continues to tell the stories of the people behind America's most iconic regional dishes. In the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic, America's reckoning with the Black Lives Matter and Me Too movements, Tony Tipton Martin's commitment to equity and recognition of African Americans' significant contributions to food and culture make her a most fitting recipient of the 2021 Julia Child Award. We are now so thrilled to welcome three speakers, all trailblazers in the world of food history research, writing, and education. The world that means so much to those of us who are historians and keepers of memory, archives, and objects, as well as the millions of people who benefit from their work. These three women were instrumental in nurturing Tony and her career, and it's truly my pleasure to welcome the inimitable and marvelous triad of Ruth Reichel, Natalie Dupre, and Ronnie Lundy. I first met Tony when she was a young reporter in the food section of the Los Angeles Times. At the time, she was working the nutrition beat, but when I became the food editor, I sensed that she had too much talent to be boxed into a single subject. Do you, I asked her, have any desire to tackle other subjects? Her answer was a resounding yes, and she went on to write a series of really powerful pieces the one that I remember best is one she wrote about a family's struggle to survive on food stamps. Tony's writing was so strong and so moving that we actually had to set up a 501c3 
to deal with the donations that came pouring in from our readers. Another piece that I remember with great affection is one she wrote about licking the spoon when she helped her grandmother make devil's food cake. The piece was wonderful, and the recipe is so great that I've been making that cake ever since. I couldn't help thinking about that when I first held a copy of Jubilee in my hands. There was Nanny, once again, taking her place in the great pantheon of African-American cooks. I was very sad, but not at all surprised, when Tony was lured away to become the food editor of the Cleveland Plain Dealer. And I have watched with great admiration and enormous pride as she has gone on to virtually rewrite the history of American cooking. Like Julia, Tony has been a pioneer and she's made Americans rethink their idea of what American cooking is. I know that if Julia were still with us, she would be very proud of the work that Tony has done and very happy that Tony is earning this award. Hello, I'm Natalie Dupree and I am so thrilled to be able to have this opportunity to say good things about Tony Tipton Martin, about whom there is nothing but good. Tony Tipton Martin and I met when we, we were forming uh, the Southern Foodways Alliance and she became the nuts and bolts president, if you will. She was wonderful. I served on that first board under her and she was a terrific leader and took every opportunity to bring us forward. It was a wonderful experience. I also saw the other way that she's a leader. She was doing research and had photographs of these ladies that were African-American cooks, or chefs, if you will, and she arranged to take them and get them on the walls of the Beard House. She just met the right person and she just jumped right in. And sure enough, they were on the walls. Then when IECP came to New York for the conference, we had them all come to the Beard House. We trudged there in the rain and were so excited to see who those women were. So she is a subscriber of the pork chop theory. Whether or not it, they're live women or whether or not they're women that have passed on long ago and she needs to extol their works. The pork chop theory is when you have a frying pan and you put in a pork chop and one little pork chop in a pan goes dry. But if you have two or more pork chops in the pan, the fat from one feeds the other. And so she shares the good. She shares about who is doing what in the food industry. And she's proud of our African-American history and lets us know who the other women are. I'm all for it. Cheers, Tony Tipton Martin. Laheim. About 20 years ago, a thoughtful young journalist took the floor at the Southern Foodways Alliance and asked those of us assembled there to reconsider our assumptions about the who, what, when, where, why, and how of Southern Foodways. Listening to her that day, I knew that I needed Tony Tipton Martin to become my colleague and that I wanted her to be my friend. And it has been a gift both to my life and my work that both of those things came to pass. Now, because I'm the elder, you might think that I serve as the mentor in this relationship. And I will proudly claim that I am the person who taught Tony that you never sully a quality bourbon by putting an ice cube in it. But other than that, ours has been a pure relationship of peers. We have served at different times as one another's teacher, as one another's student, always as each other's cheerleader and inspiration. 
Inspired by that relationship and by others from many of the women you've heard here today and others you will hear from in the future, Tony has decided that the Tony Tipton Martin Foundation will become a nexus to bring together women of different ages and diverse backgrounds, women food writers, to support one another, to learn with one another, to teach one another, and to create a new paradigm for our profession in the future. Now, the kitchen has traditionally been the place where women come together to share their wisdom, to share their secrets, to create, and to give one another courage and hope. So how wonderful is it that Julia Child's Kitchen is the place where Tony is receiving the seeds for this new model for the future? And what better person than Tony Tipton Martin to cultivate those seeds into new and beautiful growth? So here's to you, Tony. Straight up, perfect. Thank you so much, Ruth, Natalie, and Ronnie for your thoughtful and personal perspectives and truly wonderful remarks. Julia Child encouraged women to pursue their aspirations as culinary writers and as so many things. Part of this legacy, of course, is one of mentorship. Tony continues that legacy. She shapes it and molds it in her own way while inspiring a new generation of women in food media. Jamila Robinson is one of those individuals. Jamila. Hi everybody, I'm Jamila Robinson, the food editor for the Philadelphia Inquirer, the North American Academy of Chair for the World's 50 Best Restaurants, and the James Beard Foundation Journalism Awards Committee Chair. It is my honor to celebrate Tony Tipton Martin receiving the Julia Child Award. Tony is a pioneer. She set the groundwork for journalists like myself who wanted to bring our stories to food sections and to also help make food stories critical to news organizations. She's been a mentor and a friend to me and so many other Black people in food media whose colleagues are frankly few and far between. I admire Tony not only as a groundbreaker, but for the rigor of her reporting and editing and her high expectations. I also admire her commitment to bring the stories of Black Americans through her books, The Jemima Code and Jubilee, which in particular highlight Black women who are the vanguard of American foodways. Tony's career has been an inspiration. Her work at newspapers as an author and now as a magazine editor has helped me to reimagine my own career and also to look at all the doors that need to be open for the next generation. Congratulations, Tony. It's such a joy to know you. I'm so happy that you're receiving this award. Thank you for all that you do and all that the inspiration that you've brought to all of us. Thank you, Jamila. And it is now my pleasure to introduce a short video about the Julia Child Award, created by our longtime partners, the Julia Child Foundation for Gastronomy and the Culinary Arts. Julia Child had a tremendous impact on American home cooks in the early 1960s. She was so new. I mean, people just didn't quite know what to make of her. At the time when Julia came up with her first television show, there really was no one like her. This woman in public broadcasting, giving her personality and her fearless nature to try and not be afraid of trying and having fun at the same time, nothing like that existed. We're always broiling, broiling, and grilling, and baking, and braising, and barbecuing chickens. But what's ever happened to the roast chicken? To see people sitting in the little benches and watching black and white Julia Child shows, like I did when I was a little girl, and reliving that kind of magic of spontaneity, of, of that it was possible. Of course you could cook beef bourguignon. You know, why couldn't you, right? And you know, there's something just terribly exciting about seeing a whole suckling pig. The Julie Child Award took about 10 years for the foundation to create. We really wanted to do something special in the food and gastronomy world that would recognize individuals but allow Julie to pay it forward. We as a foundation give well over $250,000 a year to nonprofits. We fight well above our weight limit. So the award itself both is a recognition of an individual but also a $50,000 grant to a nonprofit that the recipient is passionate about. Each of the recipients have their own unique characteristics and attributes, but at their core, 
they have that same sense of commitment to inspiring and teaching others and giving back to the community. And we know that they're gonna to continue to carry on her culinary torch. Since 2015, the award has been presented at the National Museum of American History. Here at the museum, we've been blessed to be involved with Julia since the 1990s. That culminated in 2001 when we were incredibly fortunate to collect her entire kitchen from Cambridge. The National Museum of American History is so honored to work with the Julia Child Foundation, but very much bears her imprimatur. I think she truly believes in that educational mission. The mission of the Julia Child Foundation is to educate and encourage everyone to appreciate the joys of eating, cooking, and drinking well. The relationship between the foundation and the museum is one of family. In fact, we call ourselves Team Julia. Mm -hmm. Team Julia, we have and a thing. We have a we, thing. We need t-shirts. <laughs> exactly. Without the museum, we couldn't share Julia with the entire world. She often said, have the courage of your convictions to be fearless cooks, to be courageous. The Julia Child Award empowers the recipients to pay it forward and continue to grow and expand in the culinary arts world. Julia had that deep understanding that every person was important. And when she walked in a room, the night changed. That's all for today on The French Chef. This is Julia Child. Bon appétit. We are so honored and thrilled that Eric Spivey is able to join us at the museum this year and celebrate the presentation of the award in front of Julia's Kitchen. Eric? Hello, everyone. I'm Eric Spivey, Chairman of the Julia Child Foundation for Gastronomy and the Culinary Arts. I have the honor of speaking to you in front of Julia's Kitchen, which arrived here 20 years ago. I encourage everyone to plan a visit to the museum and experience the food exhibit. I want to thank Lonnie Bunch and Thea Hartig Paula Johnson along with the entire Team Julie at the museum. They are a joy to partner with each year. On behalf of the trustees and staff of the foundation, we are proud to have made grants approaching $3 million to support research in culinary history, scholarships for professional culinary training, food writing and media, food literacy, and food justice programs. I don't need to explain how unique 2020 and 2021 have been. That being said, a constant for each of the previous six years, as well as the seventh year, is the presentation of the Julia Child Award to an incredibly deserving individual carrying on Julia's culinary torch. Thank you to Jock Papan, Rick Bayless, Danny Meyer, Mary Sue Milliken, Susan Feniger, Jose Andres, and Daniel Nirenberg for their ongoing stewardship of Julia's legacy. We are thrilled that when the jurors met earlier this year, they unanimously selected Tony Tipton Martin as the 2021 Julia Child Award recipient. Each year, they masterfully select individuals that embody many of Julia's attributes. There's so much connective tissue between Julia and Tony. They both have deep curiosities, pioneering spirits, relentless desires to mentor, groundbreaking cookbooks, PBS cooking shows, and infectious optimistic approaches to bring people together through food to make positive change. We are excited that our $50,000 grant to Tony's nonprofit will help accelerate mentoring and training activities for the next generation of women writers in the areas of food and cultural heritage. Julia would be so happy. It is now my honor to introduce Tiffany Berrier, a mentee of Tony's and someone that has her own infectious energy to educate and encourage people to have fun. Known as a drinking coach, Tiffany has firsthand insights on how Tony is making the world a better place. Okay, Tiffany, it's time for you to present the award to Tony. Thanks, Eric. As a kid, my parents reminded me to do well because you never know who's watching. As I got into this bar industry, that statement went out of the door because I was focused on fitting in. My first SFA symposium in 2013 in Oxford, I remember driving from Atlanta, super nervous, focusing on my craft, wondering if I ordered enough product for the Jasper Cross Punch, which we made in the bathtub that year, and the fact that I'd be working alongside of a cocktail historian I admired my entire career. At that time, talks of Southern history and about my ancestors were only within the Black community, but here I was having that conversation with multiple cultures, and I felt very exposed. Tony graced that event the entire weekend with confidence, facts, representation, and that smile of hers. All I could think was that I really want to follow in her footsteps. 
Years passed, Soul Summit was upon us. She saw me and I was invited. I was so humbled. My task was to create a cocktail that we could make a toast with amongst ourselves after Michael Twitty spoke. My desire was to make this drink make us feel like family. So when I was in the prep kitchen batching this drink, Tony approached me and said, are you making a red drink at this event? <laughs> as happy as I was, I wasn't sure if she approved because of her tone. Will it stain? This is tacky. I was horrified. We toasted the Soul Summit, we thanked the ancestors, we made memories, and that weekend we went our separate ways. I was nervous about that cocktail presentation for years. I continued to pay attention to Tony, cheering her on from afar and her incredible achievements in our industry, along with navigating my own. Tony and I ran into each other in Chicago at the James Beard Awards and snagged a glass of champagne. She introduced me to someone and she said, this is Tiffany. She made the incredible red drink at Soul Summit. It was bold and it represented all of us. My heart dropped. I was approved. <laughs> the drink was a win. Not only was the drink a win, but finally I understood where I belong. I assumed for so long that I had to blend in in this industry for some time, but watching Tony's approach to representation of our history helped us make our own. When Tony came into my life, watching her passion for culture and the ancestor helped me to navigate my own. Before her, I wasn't really sure how to speak or present on these topics, and now because of her, myself and others feel seen, understood, and most of all safe. She's legendary, and it is a dream come true, and literally an honor to give you this award. Oh, Thank you so much, Tiffany. I'm so happy to see you, and so happy that of all the people in the world, you're the one who's here to give this award to me. Thank you. Hi, everybody. When I was younger, I had a recurring dream. In it, I am standing on a stage, behind a microphone, accepting an award on behalf of some unseen characters. I can't hear the words of my acceptance speech, and never once do I see the faces of the actual winners. But each time I had the dream, I awoke feeling grateful and proud. Since then, I've realized that the unseen faces belong to my ancestors, the culinary professionals who nurtured our collective spirits at the table and were never given their due. This vision kept me focused on the pursuit of their truth despite adversity or when the world and the industry were unbearable and unkind. Throughout this journey, I have been blessed by more generous and loving friends and colleagues than I can name. But each and every one of you knows who you are and that you are amazing. You stuck by me and offered words that encouraged me to persevere when the story of America's true culinary heritage that I was crafting wasn't respected. With you as my counselors, dignity has been restored to the people in my dream, the ancestors who came before me, whom the world disparaged and ignored. I've also had the great fortune to be supported by professional guardian angels, my agents, Lisa and Sally Eckes, and my editors, Ruth Reichel, Casey Kittrell, Francis Lamb and Jack Bishop, you represented and endorsed my work, then you blessed me by joining that intimate group of very special friends. And how could I forget my team at America's Tesh Kitchen? I love you all. I'm grateful to the Julia Child Foundation, to you, Eric, and your trustees and advisors for this affirmation of my work. I'm also indebted to the generous team here at the Smithsonian, Secretary Bunch, Anthea Hardick, Paula Johnson, and Ashley Rose Young. You know we have a very special secret. Everyone on your teams, thank you so much for making this celebration memorable despite a pandemic. And last but not least, I simply would not be standing here without the love of my family, my selfless husband, Bruce, and our amazing children, my mom, my brother, sister-in-law, and my niece, who were always willing to run out and get more coffee and Mexican food. You are my rock. In big ways and small, 
you made it possible for me to embrace the bandana. Julia said, find something you're passionate about and keep tremendously interested in it. I did that. And now with this award, I plan to engage new role models to uplift and shepherd aspiring women, women like Tiffany, the drinking coach, as they pursue their culinary dreams. My hope is to inspire the next generation of food writers to unearth cultural food stories of every kind so that we are all free from the labels that limit our economic opportunities, our relationships, and our collective health. I may be the first African-American food writer to live out Julia's wise words in this honorable way, but if we're intentional, I won't be the last. Hashtag culinary reparations. Thank you. Congratulations, Tony, on such a well-deserved honor. We cannot wait to see what you do next. A very special thank you to everyone who participated in this special tribute. We're so grateful that you could join us and celebrate with us. Please do visit the website listed below for more information on the 25 at 25 initiative and how you can support the American Food History Project at your National Museum of American History. Also, join us on November 12th for Recovering Food Histories with Tony Tipton Martin and friends. And congratulations again, Tony. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers.